Hey everybody, it's Billy. Oh, hold on. Something doesn't seem right here. Whew, that is better. Today I'm gonna talk about the most underrated and overlooked method of training, in my opinion. Now, if you went online and typed in, hey, how do I become the most fit? What's the best method of conditioning? You're gonna see a slew of a variety of things. You're gonna see HIIT training, you're gonna see Tabata training, you're gonna see interval training, you're gonna see all these methods of how to get to the best shape of your life. But I'm here to tell you there is one method that most people aren't doing that may be one of the best things for you. And that's what we call cardiac output training. So what is cardiac output training? In short, cardiac output training is keeping your heart rate in a specific zone, typically at a lower threshold, for an extended period of time. So today, I'm gonna give you the two main reasons this is actually beneficial for you, and then how exactly you should go about doing it. The first reason is heart rate efficiency. Here's why. Cardiac output training builds eccentric strength of the heart. Well, what does that mean? The heart is a muscle. It moves just like our normal muscles through an eccentric action, which is a lengthening, and a concentric, which is the shortening action of the muscle. But what happens when our heart rate drives up, when we're doing high intensity or interval type training, the heart doesn't have the ability to fully expand. So what this does, it doesn't allow it to fill with blood fully. Well, when we keep the heart rate a little bit lower, that gives the heart full opportunity to expand, fill with blood. Then the contraction of the heart happens, all that blood gets pushed out, which allows us to be more efficient and effective with what we're doing. The amount of blood being pushed out is what we call stroke volume. This style of training builds or increases the amount of blood being pushed out per beat of the heart. This style of training is huge for recovery. So if you've had a long day of playing tennis, you've been training hard, you just feel like you haven't moved throughout the course of the day, this might be just the thing that you need. But the beautiful thing about this is it doesn't have to be long, slow running or biking. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. This can be strength-based exercises. This can be even your sport, like shooting hoops, playing lacrosse, hitting golf ball. There's a variety of things this can be done with. Again, the key principles are keeping the heart rate within the parameters, which I'm gonna give you, in the time that you're actually doing with. Why is this good for recovery though? Because as I mentioned above, with the full fill of blood of the heart, that allows new oxygen, nutrients, hormones to be pushed throughout the body. That is great from a recoverability standpoint. Long, slow movement can actually be your friend. And on top of that, you get to set yourself up for success tomorrow by being ready to train, recovering today, but you're also increasing your overall fitness and conditioning level. So the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is how you can actually pull this off. So again, if you have a heart rate monitor, that is ideal. We like to keep people between 120 and 150 beats per minute. That can vary a little bit, but that's a general rule of thumb. Again, do whatever you want. Now, we love doing some light conditioning mixed with some mobility, maybe some light strength-based work. But again, this could be you shooting hoops, practicing your sport, living within the heart rate parameters. Timing-wise, for you to truly make an impact on the eccentric strength of the heart, we need a little bit of increased volume. We shoot for anywhere from 40 to really 75 minutes of total work to truly get the maximum benefit from this. If you go below that, you just might not be training the heart at the volume that it truly needs to create this adaptation. Go above that, that's okay as well. But again, there comes a point where too much volume, just from an overall orthopedic and body standpoint, might be a little bit much. Find that sweet spot 40, 75 minutes. So hopefully by now you understand why this is important to integrate in your training and you're not gonna find it on the first page of Google. And we're not saying do this every single day. This has a strategic place just like anything else. For instance, on our online Aegis Athlete program, which is linked below, we integrate this as our fifth day of training. We have four days of strength work. This is our fifth because it helps prepare us for the back half of the week. So we use it as a middle of the week recovery period. If you got value out of today's video, please hit the like button below. And we talked about how this could be important for recovery. If you wanna learn more about that, check out this video here. That will give you a little bit of insight more on the recovery side of things. Appreciate your time. I'll see y'all soon.